Hi everyone, it's Mr. Bean. In this podcast, we're going to take a look at studying populations. As we've been talking about in class, uh, populations are groups of organisms that are the same, and they make up communities of different organisms that make up the ecosystems. But we're going to focus in specifically on different groups of organisms, and so we call those populations. First thing we have to do is we have to be able to determine a population size. And there's four methods that um, we're going to talk about. Uh, the first one, and probably the uh, easiest to do, is to actually just go out and count um, the, all the members of a particular area. And so we could go out into the woods and um, block off a certain area and say, we're going to count the number of birds that are found there. And that would be a very easy method to do. The problem with this method is that oftentimes we're looking at very large sizes of area. And so a direct observation isn't always the easiest, especially if you're talking about um, birds of Wisconsin or deer of Wisconsin. Um, it's a lot of area to sit and try to count up all the members. Um, another one that we use is called indirect observation. And when we use indirect observation, basically we're looking for signs that the organism has been found here. Uh, things such as nests or things like holes. Um, what you can do is you can kind of figure out how many organisms could fit into the nest or how big is the hole and um, how many organisms could be found there. And so you can kind of uh, come up with different ways to discover whether or not uh, the organism would be able to live there and how many of them would be present. Um, another one that uh, is a little bit more detailed is called sampling. And so what you're going to do is you're going to estimate an approximation of the number based on a reasonable assumption. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a certain area and you're going to estimate roughly how many birds are found there. And um, you can use some mathematics to help you in discovering the sampling size and to figure out roughly how, many, um, how big of a population this is found. Another one that is uh, very popular in terms of um, members of the DNR to uh, use a method called mark and recapture. And basically uh, what they do is they tag the organism and they track it. And um, you saw that on the video um, Spark where we looked at the snakes and how they were tagged so that way they could keep an eye on how big the population is, um, how often it's reproducing, where it's traveling. And then uh, today uh, in class we actually did a lab called um, the turtle lab. And so in the turtle lab you were in the process of discovering how many of them would be captured and how to figure out population size based on that. So four different methods to determine population size, direct observation, probably the easiest of them all, um, indirect observation where you're looking for signs of the organism like nests and holes, um, sampling where you're going to take a, a certain area and you're going to try to approximate how many um, of the organism is found, and then um, mark and recapture where you actually uh, capture the organism, you put some type of tracking device on it, and then you set it back free. Changes in population. Um, populations are always changing in size. Uh, you're constantly adding new members that are joining the population, or there's new members that are leaving the population. And so um, it's always changing uh, based on what the members are doing. Sometimes there's births, sometimes there are deaths, and as this happens, um, obviously it's going to have an effect on the population. Um, and a very important term is going to be called the birth rate. And so our birth rate is a population, the number of births in a population in a certain amount of time. And so what we're looking at is how many births are happening over a certain amount of time. The opposite one is going to be one that we refer to as being the death rate. It's the number of deaths in a population in a certain amount of time. So if an organism is having a lot of birth, uh, births, what's going to happen is that the population is going to go up. If there's a lot of deaths, whether there's sickness or something that's causing um, the population to decline, we'd say that the death rate is high. And so one really important way to remember this is that if you can remember, if the birth rate is greater than the death rate, the population will always increase. And 
the opposite then is going to be if the death rate is greater than the birth rate, the population will decrease. So anytime that you have more, um, more being born, it's going to increase. If you have uh, more that are dying, the population is going to decrease. Um, looking at immigration versus emigration, uh, what's going to happen is that periodically organisms are going to be forced out of an area or an organism is going to come into the area based on a lot of things. Um, some of the things that we've talked about might be, and we talked about these in class, might be food. So if an organism has the potential to get food, it will move into an area. Um, if there is plenty of water, it will move into the area. If there is an area of shelter or protection, it will move into the area. And um, those are really important needs. And also whether or not uh, homeostasis can be met or stable internal conditions where it's going to be able to survive much easier. Um, so these are kind of the things that force organisms to either move into an area or out of an area. So if it's an area that is doesn't have a lot of food or it doesn't have a lot of water or it doesn't have a lot of space or shelter or it doesn't allow for the organism to have stable internal conditions um, and that's kind of generated off of the shelter, uh, the organism is going to leave or it's going to come in depending on which one it is. And so if it's moving into a population, we refer to it as immigration. If it's moving out of the population, um, we call it emigration. So two different terms sound very similar to one another, but contrasting uh, at the same time where one's leaving and one's entering in. Uh, a formula that you need to memorize is called population density. And um, you did something very similar to this in the lab. Uh, we called it the estimate um, for the uh, group of organisms that you looked at, which was the turtle lab. And so um, you're going to need to memorize this. It's the number of individuals in an area of a specific size. So what we're trying to figure out is how many organisms roughly are there uh, per that size. And so this is the formula that you need to memorize. Okay, this one is very important. Ecologists use it quite often. Um, a population is equal to the number of individuals divided by the unit area. Okay, so after you do one of these methods, okay, so if you're doing uh, direct observation or you're doing indirect observation or sampling or mark and recapture, once you have collected that data, what you want to do then is to enter it into this equation. So you'd, um, if we use our example here, that we're trying to figure out what the population of birds is, uh, birds are. So if you go through and you're able to count them, uh, whether it's just a direct observation, so you went and you counted in your backyard at your bird feeder and there are 100 birds, um, and you figured out that roughly that's about two square meters of distance, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that 100 and you're gonna divide the two into there. And what you're gonna end up getting is 50 birds per square meter. Okay, now remember when we're talking about labels, we're looking at how many of these are in those. Okay, so the correct answer would be the population size is 50 birds per square meter. Okay, so very important concept. So we can figure out roughly what the population size is using that very simple formula, number of individuals divided by the unit area. Okay, so commit that one to memory. Um, another thing that you need to be aware of is limiting factors. And so when we're talking about limiting factors, um, hopefully you remember from class um, that it's an environmental factor that causes a population to decrease. So anything that causes the population to decrease, um, things like lacking food or water or space or w weather conditions is going to cause the population to decrease. Of course, we're gonna see emigration occur where the organisms are leaving, but if this happens um, and they're not able to leave the area or they move to another area and it's still lacking food, water, space, weather conditions, um, what's gonna happen is that the population is going to decrease. And so we call that term limiting limiting, uh, no it's not writing for me, apologize about that, limiting factors. Okay, and, and that's basically an environmental
factor that causes populations to decrease. All right, so that's an important concept. Um, and that was in the other video when we looked at how many bears can live in the forest. So we talked about that idea. And um, in that situation, there was an environmental factor that uh, one of you had to hop, one of you had to be blindfolded, or basically your eyes were covered, and the other one had to bring back enough food. So that was a, a limiting factor for you compared to all the other bears. Um, and then the last really important term is called carrying capacity. And carrying capacity is basically the idea that the largest population that an area can support. And um, in the lab, we talked about how if you had a graph and you said that um, if this was bears down here and there was food up over here, we said that if this is the amount that um, the amount of food that we have, the bear population is going to continue to go up and it will never go above this line because there's just not enough food for the organism to survive. And so what we would say is that this right here would be the carrying capacity. Whatever this number happens to be, that is the carrying capacity and organisms will not be able to, um, will not be able to survive in this environment. So what we'd see is that the organisms that try to um, move into this area and discover that there's not enough food, they would be or they would force out another organism and so we call that emigration. And so um, that's section two of our chapter, or cycle number two, looking at different ways that we study populations. All right, talk to you later.